investigating motion. This is Newton's second law. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. If we want to investigate how force and mass can affect acceleration, first let's rearrange the equation. So here we can see that acceleration is equal to force divided by mass. Okay, from this equation we can see that if force increases, that will increase the acceleration. And if mass increases, it will decrease the acceleration. So let's see how we can prove this using a practical method. There are two ways of proving this. The method on the left or the method on the right. Let's look at the one on the left to start with. So we're going to need a surface. On this surface, we're going to place a trolley. And on the trolley, we're going to have a piece of card. Now notice the card has a slot cut out in the middle, giving us two wedged areas. These are going to be important later on when it comes to calculating acceleration. To move this card, we're going to attach it to some hanging masses. And to help us calculate the acceleration, here we have a light gate. The light gate will be attached to a computer, which is not shown in this diagram. So, when the mass is pulled down, the trolley will move forward, and the card will cut the laser in the light gate. So, the light gate will see how quickly the first part is moving, giving us the initial velocity, and then how quickly the second part is moving, giving us the final velocity. Once the hanging masses hit the ground, the trolley will no longer accelerate. Then the light gate will do some fancy calculations, giving us acceleration. Now don't worry about explaining the equation or what happens inside the light gate for now. Okay, so how do we use this setup to prove that force and mass can affect acceleration? But before that, here's something important to know. When we talk about force, we're referring to the accelerating force caused by the hanging masses. In other words, this area is force. But then when we talk about mass, it's going to be the mass of the whole system, meaning the mass of the trolley plus the mass of the hanging masses together. In other words, everything that's moving. Now, let's say we want to investigate the effect of force. That means we're going to have to change force, but keep mass constant. And if you want to investigate mass, you're going to have to keep force constant. So here we have some masses. What we're going to do is place the mass on the trolley. Then we're going to run the experiment. And the data logger will tell us the acceleration. Then we're going to put the trolley back to its starting position and place another mass on it. The force, however, will remain constant. We're not going to place anything here. Once again, we're going to run the experiment and the data logger will tell us the acceleration. Then restart, increase the mass, keep the force constant and run the experiment. And again, we have acceleration. And we keep on doing this until we've collected enough data for all the masses. Perfect, so if you plot our results, we're going to see mass and acceleration. And notice that as the mass increases on the trolley, in other words, the mass of the whole system increases, the acceleration decreases. And this matches our initial hypothesis that if you increase mass, you're going to decrease acceleration. Okay, now we're going to talk about how we can test for force while keeping mass constant. Remember, force is going to come from the hanging masses over here. And mass is the mass of the whole system. So here's a problem. If I start adding masses here, I'm definitely going to increase the force. However, I'm also going to increase the mass of the system because technically the hanging masses are part of the entire system. So is there a way of increasing force yet keeping mass constant? So to do that, what we're going to do is place all the masses on the trolley first. So right now we can see all the masses are here. That means if I add the mass of the system in total, five on the trolley, you could say zero on the hanging masses. That means the mass of the whole system is five. Run your experiment and record acceleration. 
Then we're going to reset the experiment, but this time we're going to transfer one mass from the trolley onto the hanging masses. Okay, so now the mass of the system is still going to be 5. 4 plus 1. However, the force has now increased to 1. And again, we're going to run the experiment. Record acceleration. Reset and transfer another weight from the trolley to the hanging masses. But again, the mass of the whole system is still going to be 5. 3 plus 2. However, force now has increased to 2 bars. Run the experiment and record acceleration. Reset and again notice mass is still 5, 2 plus 3. However, force has increased now to 3. And acceleration. And we keep on doing this until all the masses have transferred from the trolley onto the hanging masses and record acceleration. So from here we saw that as we increased the force, in other words, transferred more masses to the hanging masses, the acceleration increased. And all the while, the total mass of the system was kept constant. Okay, to summarize. So we can either investigate the effect of mass on acceleration or the effect of force on acceleration. So looking on the left, if you want to investigate the effect of mass, keep the force constant. We do this by keeping all the masses off the trolley first, then placing them one by one onto the trolley and each time recording acceleration. On the second one, if you want to investigate the effect of force, then you're going to start by putting all the masses on the trolley and then one by one transfer them to the hanging masses. This will keep the mass of the whole system constant, yet increase the force. Okay, some practical tips. An important thing is that you want the string to be taut. In other words, it shouldn't be loose. If it's loose, the hanging masses will fall and hit the ground too early. This means the acceleration or the resultant force on the trolley will become zero. So how do we get around this problem? Number one, use a shorter string. Or use a taller table. Or you could just move the light gate a bit forward, closer towards the trolley. Finally, any surface is going to have some sort of friction. And this can affect our results. So to avoid friction, we could use an air track. If you've ever played air hockey, it's something similar to that. So this was investigating motion. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.